Yes guys, and we're back, episode 10, Battle Road to Glory, three successive promotions, and we are finally, finally, in the big boys league. It's the Premier League lads, let's get into the video. Welcome back lads, welcome back to the Battle Road to Glory. Ah oh, lads, it's been a journey, it's been a journey. But now, now this series really begins, because we are here, we are here kicking it with the big boys. Away days at Anfield, Old Trafford, Stamford Bridge. Oh, it's going to be mad. It's going to be mad. Now, in terms of objectives, let's be honest. The target this season is 40 points. Get 40 points, stay up. However we do it, doesn't matter. It could be the ugliest way of football. we just got to stay up. That's all we care about this season. Now, if we're going to stay up, we're going to have to spend money. we got 700k for the pre-season tournament. So, our budget to work with is a whopping 35 million. 35 mil. Oh, we can do some damage with this. Now, our wage budget is tiny, about 90k a week. That's going to fly up. Because now we're in the top tier, we've got to be playing big wages. It's going to it's gonna happen. So, before we get into the new transfers, we had a whole host of new contracts to dish out. Paco Gallardo, Kirk Malcolm, Reese Oxford, Romeo Hutton, Chalabar. Chalabar's on 30k a week now. Everyone was in the final years of their deal. Had to get those contracts sorted. Had to get the players that have got us this far. Signed up. Keep them for the long term. Now, one lad who is not going to be hanging around is Mamadou Sako. He's retiring this season. Bit disappointed with that. But it does mean that we are going to bring in a centre-back. And I think that I found one. It's the Northern powerhouse. It's Nat Phillips. He's valued at 9.5 mil. Now, I was trying to get him for 7. Jürgen wasn't really having it. Try my hardest, try my hardest to try and wheel and deal with this one. In the end, had to settle for eight and a half mil, which I think, I think, considering he's overall with 77, it's not a bad deal. And he's going to be going straight into our first 11. So we've absolutely smashed our transfer record. Eight and a half million, it's huge money. But then we went and smashed our transfer record again. Matty Longstaff, the Northerner, just under 20 mil. Now he's 24 years of age. You might be a little bit underwhelmed with this transfer, but I am, I am so, so happy we got him. I've had my eye on him for quite a while. He can play centre mid, he can play CDM, he can play cam. These two, 77, 78 overall, they're two of our best players without a doubt. We've got to be bringing in Premier League players. Premier League players who know the league. That's what it's all about now. Now, squad number time. As Roland Varga retired last season, the number 11 shirt is up for grabs. I've given it to Viti Rosada. Hopefully the weight of such a big shirt doesn't weigh too much on him. It does look right, it suits him. Now, the last transfer I did bring in, I wasn't in the market for a goalie, but when I was fishing around the free agents, I couldn't turn down getting Sam Johnston in. England International, 79 rated. He's only 31. He's got a couple of years left in him. He's going to be our new number one because Alessandro Demand is in his final year of his contract. I'm not going to give him a new deal. He's going to be going on a free at the end of this year. So with all the new faces coming in, there was unfortunately time to say goodbye to a few players. The scouts are in the team. Nene, he's been shipped out for 1.2 mil. Patrick Bra, a lad, he didn't have a yard of pace in League 2. He didn't have any in League 1 in Championship. I can't keep him in the Prem. He has also been shipped out for 800k for him. And then Ziggy Gordon, Ziggy Stardust Gordon, he has been moved on. He didn't play a lot last year. And to be honest, he didn't really work out. Just think, when we signed him, 600k, he was our record transfer. And now we're spending 20 mil on Matty Longstar. We've come a long way. We have come a long way. So looking at the youth team, I did say at the end of the last video, I'm going to promote in at least one or two of these off the bat straight away. And with Patrick Bra getting shipped out, we've only got one proper left back because Josh Kay is more of a utility player. Angus Guffrey, Scottish left wing back, 16 years of age. Age. He's already rated 59. Grew up on the same street as Kirk Malcolm. Him and Kirk Malcolm are going to be they're going to be battling for that number one spot at left back. So to sum up our window, Phillips, Longstaff, Johnston, and Angus Guthrie coming in. Then a Patrick Bra and Ziggy Gordon all heading out. We have spent nearly 30 mil this window. That's more than we spent in the entire series, without a doubt. If we have to summarise it before a game has been played, I mean the, the squad is stronger. The squad is definitely stronger. So before we get into the press conference for the first game, a little bit of number crunching. I've done some all-time player stats over the past three seasons. In terms of appearances, Robbie Gotts, Tom Beagle and Josh Kay lead the way. In terms of assists, George Williams leads away with 43. Robbie Gotts just very close behind on 41. Bram Boateng on 34. Quite impressive considering he missed pretty much all of last season with that ACL injury. And then looking at the goals, Tom Beagle leads the way with a half ton. Sacco on 47. George Williams on 39. So lads, first press conference before game number one. We are very close to kickoff. Talk of the town was about Nat Phillips. He's going to make a big difference. He is going to make a big, big difference to our team. He's going to be straight in, straight into the heart of the defence. This lad will head anything. Matty Longstaff also made the news. Of course, he's going straight into the lineup. I'm expecting big things from him. But that is enough talking, lads. That is enough talking. There's enough planning, enough pre-season talk. Let's get into the first game, which is against Wolves. So our opening day lineup, lads. Johnson in goal. Malcolm Phillips, Oxford Hutton in the back four. Chalabar, Longstaff, Beadlin in the middle. 
Rosado, Osaka, and Gotts up top. Are we ready? Are we ready? It's the Premier League, lads. It's the Prem. Oh, it's been such a journey. Such a journey. So, so excited for this season. Like I was saying, this series starts now. This is it. This is where the work starts. And this first season, like I was saying, it's all about staying up. It's all about staying up. Essentially, we've got a championship squad here. But we're going to give it a good go. A good go. And we are off. Come on then, let's have it. Opening passages of play. Now, Wolves, they were very good. They were very, very good. Only 10 minutes in, and we really struggled to get hold of the ball. Johnson had to make a good save with that effort there. It didn't take Wolves long, but I mean, they were piling the pressure on. We were stuck in our half. That effort there, almost get away with it. Tom Beelan picks it up, skips past the defender. At this point, counter attack well and truly on. Saka picks it up in the middle, plays it to Matty Longstaff. Good little touch here, beats it to the midfielder, gives it back to Tom Beedlin. You can see the option to Matty Longstaff, good little touch, plays it on to Viti Rosada. Good save. Going well into the second half, this game was backs against the wall stuff. And this is only Wolves. Backs against the wall, we were defending for our lives. Defending for our lives. We managed to defend that attack there, give away a corner. So I made a triple sub, on comes Boatang, Thomas Lamb and George Williams. See if any of these three can spark a little bit of life into this one. Result in corner gets whipped in, Vita Rosada picks it up. Now we've seen this happen many, many times this series. A poor corner, we pick it up, we just travel. Travel down the line, get the afterburners on, counter attack on. We've got four players flooding into the box, just waiting for that option. He gets to the byline, he checks back, He's got, we've got an option, crosses it in, doesn't quite get there. Maria Hutton comes out of nowhere, wins the header, keeps the attack alive. Rosada plays it into Beedlin. Back to Rosada, into the box, hits it. Good save from Jose Sarr. Resulting corner gets whipped in and Nat Phillips' header just goes over. I told you, he will hit anything. And I've expected him to get goals from corners this season, without a doubt. Seven minutes from time, Wolves on the attack here. This effort, Johnston, great save. Great, great save. We then clear our lines, but Robbie Gotts can't be losing the ball there. Can't be losing the ball there. So inexperienced. This effort somehow just went wide. Got away with that. That's get out of jail free card used at this point. So with seconds to go in the game, we win the header from a from a free kick. Boatang plays it into George Williams. Plays into Beedle looking for that one two. It's an awful pass. Awful, awful pass. Expect so much more from our captain there. Losing the ball into stoppage time. We then get a caught out at the back. This effort flies into the top corner. It's brutal. It's brutal. This is the Prem, lads. Can't be making mistakes like that at this level. You will be punished. So a 1-0 loss on the opening day. Stoppage time goal. It's, it's savage. It's really savage. Robbie Gotts and Romeo Hutton, I want to talk about their performances. Not good enough. I mean, Gotts losing the ball there at the end, that is entirely on him. Game number two was against West Brom. Now, with this one, I brought in Haran Babatang and Jaquil Marshall Rutty, because obviously Robbie Gotts wasn't playing well. Tom Beedlin, I've got to drop the players. If you're, not, if you're not playing well, out of the team straight away. So, off to the Hawthorns it was. Now, with this one, playing against a promoted team, have to be picking up points in these ones. Haran Babatang making his first appearance in about seven months after that ACL injury. Hopefully he can have a good performance. Inside the first passages of play, West Brom on the ball here, playing a little bit of tiki tackle on the edge of our box. Not really anything on, we're in a good shape, no danger at this point. And then Chalabar gets caught out, that is a penalty. It's definitely, definitely a penalty. It's no question marks, the replay confirms it. So Sam Johnston had a moment in his second game to make himself a hero, an early hero for us. Five minutes in, Striker steps up, he saves it, doesn't blink keeps us in the game at 0-0. Going down the other end, Haran Boatang gets into their box. He checks back, you can see Eshen Sako picks him out. Near post, not a bad effort, not a bad effort. Coming up to the 20 minute mark, this effort here hits the post, we get away with that. This one moments later, somehow it's gone wide, somehow. We were riding our luck, riding our luck. 33 minutes in, Jaquil Marshall right, he starts off the counter attack. Matty Longstaff on the ball here. You can see Eshen Sako pointing for it. Glorious pass, puts him through, he's one on one, he's got a score. How has he missed? How many times have we seen him score that? That's his bread and butter. When chances like that don't go in, you start thinking it might not be your day. So coming up to the end of the first half, we had a free kick. Matty Longstaff then whips it in. We don't win the header. I don't know why he's picked out of eating Rosado. I shouldn't be doing that. Ball gets cleared. Oxford clears it up. Oxford picks it up. Three cycles. We can fill the attacks back on. If we can nick a goal before the end of the first half, I felt like we would have been right in this one. Saka then slips through Matty Longstaff. The record signing. Goes and gets our first goal in the top flight. Oh, you can't write it. Can't write it. That has been a goal in the making for three seasons. Scoring in the Premier League with our record signing does not get better than that. And we, we, we were worth it. We were definitely worth that goal as well. Going into the second half, West Brom far too easy here. They're half through the middle of the pitch. Where is the midfield? Where is the midfield? Chalabot nowhere to be seen. Longstaff nowhere to be seen. Boatang, I'm just watching. Not helping out at all. 
West Brom in the work of our box. It's a worldie. Top bins. I mean, what do you do about that? So, with not much time in the second half to go, West Brom with a free kick deep in their half. They play up the middle of the pitch. Now, something we haven't been doing. We haven't. We didn't do it at all in the Wolves game. We weren't doing it in the West Brom game. We are just winning the ball, putting a foot in. Chalabar finally does it. Picks up the ball. Long stuff on the attack. You can see Sacco screaming for it. He's through the middle. He's one on one. Surely this time he does go and score. Makes no mistakes with that one. Don't give this guy two chances. He will get goals in every single division. And now he's doing it in the top flight. Goes and puts us back into the lead. Lovely, lovely stuff. So the next passage of play, West Brom go long. We end up winning the first ball. We don't win the second ball. Really, really poor. Got to be doing better than that. West Brom on the counter attack at this point. We're trying to get back, trying to drag the players back into a shape. Not really anything on. Mario Hutton follows his forward, then realises he needs to get out there, stop the cross. He gets over to the winger, he's holding him up, he's doing well, holding him off. Ball gets played into our box, far too easy there. They get into our box, then they go back out wide, a bit weird. Reese Oxford, calm as you like, sweeps up, solid bit of defending. Next passage of play, West Brom, they, they realised pretty quickly they were going to attack us down the right. Mario Hutton was shattered, I should have brought him off. We went ultra defensive to try and hold on, as long as gives away a free kick. A little bit silly, but I don't mind it because it breaks down the attack. Ten minutes to go, again, down the right-hand side. Joachim Ibanez came off the bench here, does his defensive duty as well, gives away a corner. And then the resulting corner gets played in. Ibanez, what are you doing there? Got to put a foot in, doesn't put a foot in. Gets played into our box. West Brom going equalise, have to settle for a point. Ah, so, so annoying. So annoying, we should have won that game. But don't forget, there was a penalty in the first five minutes. It could have easily been very different if we were 1-0 down in the first five. So we're going to do a little bit of goal analysis now on that equaliser. The first mistake is Joachim Ibanez. His defensive position here, all he's got to do is stop that player getting into the box. That's his only job at this point. Breezes straight past him. It's just not good enough. The second mistake at this point is the back line. They've got to get out. Get out of the box. Push up. Don't invite the pressure on. None of the lads push up. They all just sit inside the box. The third mistake, Nat Phillips. Why is he backed off by two yards? Gives him the opportunity to shoot. It's not good enough. That is that is like League 2 defending. You can't be defending like that if you're going to have any chance this year. Now, after just hammering the defence, I do want to take a moment to talk about Reese Oxford. He won the ball back seven times in this game. He did play really well. He did stand out quite noticeably. Obviously, Ishan Sacco and Matty Longstaff get the news because they got a goal and assist each. But, like I said in the previous video, you've got to talk about the defending because it is very, very important this season. And with the games coming thick and fast, look who it is. We're welcoming Chelsea at home. These are the kind of games that we've been dreaming about. We've been dreaming about these kind of games. Welcoming players like Mount, Pulisic, they've got Lukaku on the bench, Benucci, our boys. Playing against the biggest clubs in the world. This is what it's all about. This is what we this is what we wanted back, back on day one. We wanted Barrow to be a giant of English football. It doesn't get much bigger than this, does it? So, from kickoff, we build the ball nice and calm up the pitch. Brown Boateng on the ball here, plays into Ishan Sacco, beats one defender, beats the midfielder, edge of the box, hits it, goes and makes it 1-0. Oh, you can't write it. What a start in this game. Truly, truly, truly astonishing. He's got no right to shoot from there. He's beat the goalie, all ends up. It's a world-class finish. World-class finish against a world-class team. So 1-0, on we go. 16 minutes on the clock. This is Chelsea we're talking about here. They play it so easily down the wing. Emerson on the ball here, licks up the Pulisic. Little one-two there. Emerson picks it back up. Romero Hutton's trying to hold him off. Don't let the cross go in. Far too easy. Goes into our box. What's going on for that? Cut mark on Ducks. They go and grab one to level things up. It didn't take him long at all to go and get the second. Go and get their noses in front. So with Chelsea getting their noses in front, and it was brutal, it was a quick fire double goal. The boys had to reset, go again. Matty Longstaff and Sacco link up quite well here. Longstaff does brilliantly, plays it into Sacco. You see Boatang screaming for it, picks him out, he hits it. That's got to go in. If you don't take your chances at this level, you will be punished. You will be punished. And of course, of course, Chelsea wouldn't have showed us how it's done. They're going to grab the third. And then with stoppage time up at the end of the first half, I mean, I would have been happy to go in 3-1 down at half time. They went and made it 4. I mean, honestly, this league is just brutal. So, 4-1 down going into the second half. Probably got us on the ball here. I mean, at this point, the game's completely gone. All I can hope is that the boys put in a bit of a shift, show a little bit more about what they're about. Sacco picks it up on the edge of the box. He's got three into the box. Checks back, does the right thing. Gives it to Longstaff, hits it. It's a weird deflection. I don't care how they go in, as long as they do go in. But, of course, any time we got a little bit of room in this game, Chelsea just reminded us how far we have got to go. They didn't just go and make it 5-2. They didn't make it 6-2. 7-2 was the final score. That's our heaviest defeat of this series. I mean, 
if you want to be kicking it with these big boys, these days are going to happen. I mean, Mason aren't getting four goals. Ah, oh, lads. Ah, oh, lads. Well, it's a free hit. It's a free hit. These kind of games, we expect nothing from them. We scored two against them. What do you do? So, game number four was against Fulham. Now, we've got history with these lot. Bad blood. Don't like them. Hate them. As you can see, Josh K comes in at left back because Kurt Malcolm, he just got he got absolutely destroyed against Chelsea. He got torn apart. I brought him out of the team just to give him a bit of time off. As you can see, we build the ball up the pitch. Tom Beadling on the ball here, edge of the box, hits it. Now, you're probably wondering why has that made the highlight reel? Well, that's the level of chances that we have been creating in games. If I don't put that in, we've got nothing to show for our team. Josh K then gets caught out, nowhere to be seen at left back. I mean, I just remembered why he's not been playing. Fulham go and get hit the post with that one there. Early warning sign. From that attack, Johnston rolls the ball out to Reece Oxford. Decides today's the day he'll make a mistake. Very uncharacteristic. That effort flies in from 25 yards. Always a worldie against us. They always score worldies against us. I don't know what it is. So, so jammy. As you can see, next passage of play is just bodies in the box. So many bodies. Defending for our lives. Little flick here. They go and get themselves two goals. So, going into the second half, Fulham should have had a third. It was ruled out for offside, thankfully. Thankfully, it was ruled out. I mean, I don't think he was offside, but we'll allow it. Nat Phillips then had a great bit of defending there. Saves a certain goal. Now, Nat Phillips is one of the only bright sparks of this game. As you can see here, he carries the ball for an interception, plays it down the line. Probably got heavy touch. But, as I was saying, Nat Phillips wasn't having it. Picks up the ball again, calm as you like. Clears it, does his defensive duty as well. Marshall Wright had this effort from about 25 yards to four minutes to go. It was more of a half chance, really. And then Nat Phillips again wins the ball. We then launch the slowest counter-attack known to man in stoppage time. Simon Menendez, the youth player, I promoted him before this game. He then set up Robbie Gotts to get his consolation goal. But it's another loss. 2-1. On we go. So as good as it was that the youth player got a little moment there, it's another loss, lads. It's another loss. We're conceding far too many goals and we've only picked up a single point. Back to the drawing board. Things need to change. So just how the very first season started, the team are not happy. I'm not happy. We're better than this. We're a lot better than this. We don't need to be giving away last minute goals, conceding seven at home to Chelsea. We're a lot better than that. So Beadling's coming out of word. We've got to change things up. Looking at the tactics. Now, I said I would never do this, but the games have been so damn difficult. Gap between the championship and the Prem is unbelievable. It's the hardest career mode that I've ever played. So I've gone to a five at the back. I've had to drop Robbie Gotts because obviously he can't play in this system. I've gone with Rosada and Sacco up top. Longstaff, Chalabar and Beedlin in the in the middle. Josh K is going to be playing at left wing back. So with the new system, hopefully, hopefully we can turn things around. Let's get into the next round of highlights. And we're kicking it off at home against Everton. Now, once again, playing against anyone in the top half is basically a free hit because we by rights shouldn't even be here. We shouldn't even be in this league. We've overachieved massively getting three consecutive promotions. So any any kind of result against the top boys, I'll take happily. First five minutes, as you can see here, we are camped on the edge of our box, defending for our lives. Every single pass we are chasing down. Chalo with him wins the ball, plays up to beat Rosado. Little one-two over Ishan Sacco. Front to back in three passes. This is how we're going to have to play now. It's going to have to be no support. Beat Ishan Sacco. Ishan Sacco gets into the box. It's a really tight angle. He hits it, drags it wide. That's the quality of chance. That's the quality of chance. We've got to be putting those away or making the goalie at least work. Next passage of play, 20 minutes in. Three soccer picks up the ball. Carries it out of defence, nice and calm, does his rear Ferdinand duties. We then play up the pitch to Chalaba, plays it to Beedlin. Romeo Hutt at the bottom of the screen here. He's got to be breaking the gut to get out wide, create the angle. We then play it back to Beedlin. This effort, he makes a good save. Two great chances, two great chances. Resulting corner was whipped in. Oxford powers it over, going well into the second half. Far too easy down the right hand side here. Oxford goes over, misses his first tackle. Hutton, second tackle, misses that one. Nat Phillips misses the third one. Thomas Lamb misses the interception, but Oxford just makes up for it. Honestly, hanging on for our lives. We then go front to back. Somehow, Longstaff's won that header. Peter Rosada sends it out wide to Ishan Sacco. Beats his defender nice and easily. Gets into the box. Hits it again. Drags it wide. We were having chances. We had chances in this game to go into the lead. With 20 minutes to go, we can sense another counter-attack is on. Calabar plays it into Karan Babatang. Into George Williams off the bench. Fresh legs. Charges through the middle. Gets a bit lucky there. Attack not gone, Boateng then slips him through, he gets into the box, what's he got? Hits it right at the goalie, oh lads, five chances, five chances and we didn't have anything to show for it. So coming into the dying embers of this game, Fulbert's played into our box, this effort 
What a save by Johnston. What a save. Resulting corner was whipped in. We then cleared the danger. Robbie got picked up. He came off the bench. It's exactly what I brought him on the team. Exactly what I brought him on the pitch to do. Fresh legs. Just run it. Run it to the channel. Try and beat the defender. Summer beats his defender. Gets into the box. Yeah. What's he got? Hits the crossbar. Boateng. How? How has that not gone in? Oh, lad. How has that not gone in? Honestly. It's an open goal. It's harder to miss. <laughs> Oh, so you just know, you just know, you know Everton are going to score. You know they're going to score with five minutes to go. At this point, I felt like it was done. All the players sunk to the floor. Motivation at an all-time low. Defended for 86 minutes. We had so many chances to go into the lead and we couldn't do it. So from kickoff, the boys all, all out attack at this point. If we lose 2-0, it doesn't really matter. We're pouring players forward. Romeo Hutton on the ball here, looking for an option. Gets it into the front men. George Williams picks it up here. Nice and patient, gives it long, long staff, turns, hits it, gets blocked. Trying to keep this attack alive because if Everton go to keep ball, the game's gone at this point. They go long, we then chase it down, Romeo Hutton picks it up, gets flattened. We'll have that, we'll take a free kick, we're in stoppage time. Yellow card gets given. So this was it, last chance saloon with the free kick. It gets lofted in, out of nowhere, Ishan Sako with the header. Goes and levels things up. I pulled my controller up. The controller went flying at this point. I'm not even going to lie to you. I celebrated that like it was a real goal. I can't even explain to you how much, how important that goal is. It's crucial that we get that point. So picking up our second point of this season. Hopefully, hopefully, we can get a little bit of form now. And the next game was against Norwich off to Carrow Road. Where are you, Delia Smith's boys? Now on paper, this has to be three points. Norwich, I mean, I don't know what their team's actually saying. I don't recognise most of their players. Playing against the bottom half teams, we've got to be winning these ones. Got to be winning these ones. With the boys in a spring in their step after that last point we just got, we were playing a lot better. Playing a lot better football. As you can see here, Beedlin, look quick feet. VE, quick feet again. Gets into the box. Forces a good save from the keeper. Resulting corner gets whipped in. Nat Phillips powers that one just wide. Again, we were attacking a dominant first 20 minutes. Beat him with this effort. Another good save. Rebound gets blocked. Win another corner. Ball gets whipped in. Nat Phillips with their header. Powers it in. I told you he'll be dangerous from set pieces. Gets us a nice early lead. Just what I want to be seeing. 21 minutes on the clock. Josh K on the ball here. Plays it into Matty Longstaff. Shrugs off his defender. Gets into the box. He's got three in the middle to pick out. He cuts it back. Vita Rizada goes and makes it two. Lads, I think this is it. This could be the catalyst have to start getting goals start getting wins it's a great goal truly great goal but this is the premier league any moment of complacency a lapse of concentration you're punished straight away that effort flew in straight away to make it 2-1 we needed that third goal we needed that two goal cushion again i felt like we were more than more than a value for our money for this one ball gets flung out to the right hand side Romero hutton puts it in to ijan sako he's got a pass there he's got a pass tom beelum is open in the middle for attacking going into the second half Norwich on the ball, they came out of a spring in their step, obviously they're playing at home. This effort here, what do you do? What do you do? Two all, have to go again. Lads, we're only playing well in passages of games, we're not really playing well like a whole way through. But then again, I suppose that's what the Prem's all about. Straight from kickoff, we work the ball up the pitch, Sacco, he looks offside, goalie saves it, punches it into the top corner. Don't care how they go in, do not care how they go in, we will take it happily. But, once again, the moment we started celebrating, with a little bit of room to breathe, Norwich goes straight up the other end. I mean, who scores this goal? What is this, Zidane? What is that about? What is that? Oh man, honestly. So, 3 all at this point, triple sub time. Off goes Chalab by Rosada Beagling. On comes Robbie Glotz, George Williams and Ellis Bird. With 10 minutes to go, Norwich on the attack. Desperately trying to keep a hold of the ball. That one just went wide. Hanging on. We're hanging on. At this point, I'm happy for a point. I'll take the point very, very happily. Norwich then worked the ball brilliantly into our box. Missed tackle there. Thomas Lamb with a missed interception. Oh, they've got to have done it. It's another loss. No. <laughs> the next game was against Arsenal and it wasn't much better. A 10 men Arsenal, 2 0 up with 10 minutes to go. With this one, honestly, Ellis Bird turns, spins, gets us one goal back, but it was a consolation. It was a consolation because the last chance we got in this game just shows how our season's been going. Sacco, he's through on goal. It hits Viti Rosada. Oh, lads, lads. It's not going to plan. Nothing's going to plan. Nothing's falling our way. The luck has just not been with us. So, final game of the video. We're off to St. James's Park against Newcastle. Matty Longstaff against his former team. Ellis Bird into the starting 11. Kirk Malcolm returns at left back. So, with this one against Newcastle, we have to win. We have to win. There's no questions about it. 
We started the better of the two teams. First 20 minutes, we were all over Newcastle. A through ball there gets played through. Somehow, Saka's through on goal. Got to score the first one. Doesn't score it. Gets the rebound. Even the first one. Even the first effort. That should go in. That has to be a goal. Get very, very lucky to take a 1-0 lead there. Fans went mental for that one. 35 minutes in. Matty Longstaff then won a penalty just inside the box. Very, very lucky. Some things are certain in life. Eric Dyer giving away penalties. You know it's going to happen. Saka stepped up. Slotted it away. Made it two. And then, out of nowhere, Matty Longstaff whirled the edge of the box. Ozil makes it three. Oh, before the end of the first half, to go 3 0 up. It just showed, it just showed. Keep faith with it because we will play good football. We will get the results eventually. Eventually, it will go right for us. Ishan Saka got his hat trick in the, in the second half. Gets very lucky here. It's a great goal from Matt Cardia to the Fox. That is our first win of the season, our first clean sheet of the season. My God, did we need it. It feels like a cup final, it feels like a trophy. That's how big that win was. So, that's everything for these highlights. Let's see how we're getting on. So that's before we get into the league table, quick little press conference. Lucas Avala, he made his uh, debut for us in that Newcastle game, brought him off the bench. Didn't have any highlights, but he was very solid, very sturdy in the middle. Ishan Sako obviously took the headlines with his hat trick. If we're going to stay up this season, his goals are going to be crucial. It's going to be like Jermaine Defoe for Sunderland. It's going to be absolutely monumental that we get him scoring. And then, of course, the last question was about our poor run of form finally ending. Seven games without a win. We also crashed out of the League Cup against Bournemouth. It's a monumental win. Monumental. Iconic, even. So, there's no surprises for guessing what end of the table we are at. We are in 17th. One win, two draws, five losses. We're on five points. We're not in the relegation zone. Just. Just. Only on goal difference. I'll tell you what, it's going to be tough this season. It's going to be really, really tough. When we go through the results that we had, that last minute goal against Wolves, that should have been a point. We shouldn't have lost that game. Getting hammered by Chelsea, getting hammered by Arsenal. What can you do? The game against Norwich, we were 2-0 up. We lost 4-3. We can get results this season. I feel like we're not I don't feel like we're the, we're one of the worst three teams in this league. But it's going to be a mission. It's going to be an absolute mission. You're going to have to let me know down in the comments. Did we change the system again? Did we try and bring in like do I try and look for more free agents? Did we change the 11 that we're playing? Something's got to change because I feel like it's there, but we're just not quite putting the pieces together in the right way. So lads, that is where we're going to wrap up this video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you are new. This season is going to be tough. It's going to be tough. It's not going to be the past three seasons. That was that was just getting here. Now, now the real work starts. This is it. This is where the real challenge begins. I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.